Hi, and welcome to this video of Dynamics V65 talk, where I'll be discussing part two of entitlements in Dynamics V65 field service. And in this second video, I'm going to be focusing on more complex configurations and also the use of entitlements applications. But before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Dion Taylor. I'm a Microsoft Business Applications MVP. Feel free to check out my blog at d365goddess.com. Follow me on Twitter at d365goddess or just connect with me on LinkedIn by scanning the QR code on the screen. All right, so let's get started. So in the previous video, we talked about setting up the entitlement record which is what you're looking at right now. And that would only be setting up what it applies to both field service products and services or just products or just services, applying a price list, applying discount. You can do that in combination, both of them, or just pick one of them. We talked about entitlement, the priority of those. And then we also were able to add products to that as well. So we're going to make it a little bit more complicated. So now we're going to add entitlement applications. So let me just go ahead and click here on new entitlement application. So you see a couple of fields on here. Obviously the name field is exactly that. It's, it's just a name field, nothing special about it. These fields though are kind of special. So let's go over them real quick. The service account field only needs to be populated if the account where the service will be performed is different from the account that's populated in the primary customer field on that entitlement. So let me just go back here to the entitlement. So if it's different than this particular guy, then we need to populate that. And keep in mind that you could only put service account in here that are related that have the billing account set to that primary account, right? So if I go back again to this family entertainment center, primary customer account, if I go drill into that and I'm going to be able to pull up here, this child account, oops, let me just go back here. We can see here that the billing account for that is that family entertainment center, fashionable department stores. So let's go back here. We can pick any service accounts that have the same billing account. Again, if that's where the service is taking place. Now, if I select that, you can see now that the customer asset field is locked. That does not mean that we cannot pick customer assets for that service account because if I actually clear this, if I click on this, I have here a FEC asset and that's actually the customer asset that's on that, that's on that primary account, primary customer account. But I also have a roof ventilator fan motor and that guy is at that child account. So let me go back here to fashionable de department stores, which is again, right? That child account. And if I click here on field service, we can see here that roof ventilator fan motor and the heating regulator over here. So if I click on this, oops, let me do that. If I click on this, you can see that I can select all of those. So here's the roof ventilator motor, that's part of the child account, the heating regulator, part of the child account, and FEC asset, which is part of family entertainment center. So what that means is that if I select any of those customer assets, let's just do the roof ventilator fan motor. Let me just actually save that and let me then drill into that. So you can indeed see that that is actually related to that fashionable department stores, right? So that means that let me just go back here. Anytime that we perform service, a work order is created for this particular and associated, I should say, to this particular customer asset. Go back to the entitlement. Then the warranty price list is going to be applied to that work order 
for both work order products and services, right? So again, the entitlement applications really stands for when is this entitlement going to be applied? Now, if I wanted to also add an incident type to that, so for example, I'm going to say fan out as well, and I'm going to save that, and then I'm going to activate that entitlement. What that's going to mean is that only when a work order is created for this customer asset with this incident type, that's when this entitlement is going to be applied, right? So basically the more that you add to this, the more that we're filtering out, right? The conditions of when that particular entitlement should be applied to that work order. Okay. So we just saw when we're populating here, this service account, we cannot populate data in the customer asset, but we can populate data in the asset category. So what this means is that if you have a group of assets at this particular service account that you want covered, you can just go ahead and populate that asset category. So let's say HVAC, I only have one. So each customer asset that has that category associated with it. And again, let me just go back to a customer asset. Here's that customer asset again. Here's my category fields. So if I set that to HVAC, every single customer asset at this service account with that asset category will be covered when the work order is applied then this entitlement will be associated with that. If I want to filter that out a little bit more, if I want that, but only for certain incident types, again, I can just go ahead and apply one. So now anytime a work order is applied at this service account for this asset category with this incident type, that's when my entitlement is being applied. All right. Now, Let's go back here to the entitlement. And I want to show you that you can see that there could be multiple entitlement applications here. So you don't have to just stop with one. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to open up the entitlement oops, application that I already have. Just go back here. And this is, you can see this, this is for the service account, fashionable department stores. And anytime that I have an incident type with fan out, it's going to apply this entitlement. And just to look one more time, that's just going to apply the warranty. Now let's create another one. I want to apply to family entertainments family entertainment center actually has a customer asset and that's this one fec asset and i want that customer asset to be under this warranty under this entitlement so anytime that we have work orders for that customer asset i want that I want this entitlement to be applied. So now you can see that we have two of them. So again, let me show you that real quick. We have two entitlement applications, one for the fashionable department stores, which is that child account, child location, right? That has the same billing account, which is family entertainment center. That's one. And then we have the family entertainment center asset. You can see that here that's related to the family entertainment center that will also apply this entitlement. All right. So let's take a look at that. I'm actually going to activate that right now and let's take a look. So the first entitlement application was at fashionable department stores when the fan out incident type would happen. All right. So let's go to fashionable department stores. I'm going to go to field service. We're going to create a new work order.
fan out and I'm just going to save and close. And here he is. And then again, we can see that service account is fashionable, department store, the billing account, right? This is important, family entertainment. And now let's take a look. Now, keep in mind that that price list is not going to be applied at the work order level. It's going to be applied at the products and the services level. So let's go ahead and open that up. I'm going to click on other. This is where we will see that right here. You can see that entitlement. It now has the warranty price list. Now, if you did something wrong and oh my gosh, I actually applied that particular entitlement, but I shouldn't have done that for whatever reason that might be in this case, um, we're not tying it to, for example, a customer asset. But if that was the case, oh my God, I tied it to the customer asset. If you go back to the work order and remove the customer asset, nothing is going to happen. You would still have to go in here and you would have to click here on disable entitlement. Now what happens, you can see here the estimate information, 800 and something, right? If I go back here to other and I disable that and I save this and now I go back to estimate information, it will update my pricing. And you're doing this on a per product and per service level, right? It's not like I disable it over here and then everything is disabled. This is just for this product. If I then uncheck that again, save it, go back to estimate information again, it's back to what it was. Now, again, if I go to my other products, same thing, right? I have to disable it over there. All right. So that was that first entitlement application now take let's take a look at the other one here's my fec asset so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to first create a work order for the asset or i should say for the account that the asset belongs to but i'm not going to put so that's the family entertainment so let's create a work order and i'm not going to populate my customer asset i'm going to forget about that so let's go to field service. I'm going to do create a new work order for this service account. We can pick any incident type that we want. Let's just do sure machine oil change. And then I'm going to save and close that. Okay. Let's take a look. Now, as you can see, this is not tied to a customer asset at this particular point. So let's just take a look. Here's our oil filter, which is $20. If I click on other, you can see that the entitlement has not been added over here. All right, let's go back to the work order and let's now update that customer asset. So that was our FEC asset, right? Let's see, here it is. I'm going to save that. And if I go back to my task products and services, go back to my oil filter. Oops. And if I click here on other, you can see that now the entitlement has been applied. And if I go to my estimate information, let me just go ahead and refresh this. We can now see that the discount is now in place. It updated our estimated amounts. Again, if I want to go back here and disable that entitlement, I can just go ahead and save that. We can see now again, it's back to 20. If I go back to other and I set it back, I enable that. And we go back to our estimate, it's back to 15. So you can see that by using the entitlement applications, now you really have the ability to do a lot more complex rules when it comes to entitlements. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button again and be sure to check back again next week for yet another video. Stay safe, everybody. Have a great day.